Hello, Randy K7AGE. I'm going to make up a DC power extension cable. I thought it would be a good time to look at power pole connectors. Anderson Power Products manufactures the power pole connector. If you Google power pole connectors, you will find lots of search results, including a Wikipedia page that describes the power pole connector and scrolling down it talks about it being a de facto standard for amateur radio Aries and Racy's MCOM groups. Another connector that's been used a lot for power is the white body Molex connector and it comes in both a male and female body as well as male and female pins so a relationship has to be established for which connector and pins are used for power source and to your rig. Some guys have used this two pin trailer light connector and you can plug two of these connectors together so you can use the same connector for both the power source and for the rig. And you can buy your power pole connectors at many places including DX Engineering, PowerWorks, Quicksilver Radio, West Mountain Radio, and MFJ all offer power pole connectors and accessories. A good time to look for power pole connectors is at your local ham fest. You can buy kits of uh, connector bodies and various pins. Uh, here's bags of uh, connectors with the different pin sizes. Uh, here's the crimp tool, which is very popular. A display that shows the various body styles and that you can use in mounting. And these power distribution blocks are really handy to have. The power pole bodies come in different sizes for different current requirements. We're going to be using the, the bodies on the far right, which are good for 15, 30, or 45 amps. The bodies are also available in different colors. We will typically be using black and red for our negative and positive connections. Although you may want to use blue to signify a higher voltage, say from a solar panel, that you would not want to plug into your radio. The same connector can plug into itself. So this solves the problem of which connector goes on the power supply, which goes on the, the rig end. They're interchangeable and the same. The connector body will accept a 15, a 30, or 45 amp connector pin. Now all the pins handle 45 amps, but what's different here is the gauge of wire that the pins will accept. We have a small, a medium, and a large. So the 15 amp will accept a 20 through 16 gauge wire. A 30 amp will accept a 16 gauge through a 12 gauge wire. And a 45 amp will accept a 14 through 10 gauge wire. Now you can mate a 45 to a 15, so we don't have to select the pin based on the current size. We select the pin based on the the wire size. Now the pins may either be soldered or crimped and if you select a crimp it's best to buy one of these ratcheting style crimp tools. These are available in the $35 to $50 price range depending on where you buy them and the crimp tool will ensure that the connector is properly compressed and crimped and formed so it fits best in the plastic body. If you have a lot to do crimping is the way to go invest in a good tool. Okay, let's take a look at the connector bodies. This is the, the rear side where the wires go in, and we flip it around, and here's the, the front side um, where we're going to see the pin when we plug it in. And the connectors have a, have a tongue and a groove, which allows the connectors to mate together. So you can um, slide these together. And... They can go in almost any order. You can have the, the red on the right, the red on the left. You know, you can have the, the red on the top. And flip it around and have the, the red on the bottom. So, but there's one way we want to make these, these two connector pieces together. And the way I remember it is red on right and spin it around and right up here at the top you can see this A. So if I can read the A, so it's red and right, read A, and then slide the black next to it. So it just slides in and now the two are together. So that's the correct orientation that we want to use. Again, read A, red on right, be able to read, read the A. Okay, here's a, a couple of the pins, and when they mate together, they're flipped around opposite each other, and so it pushes together and goes 
bumps past the, the tongue there, and that's the mating section for the connector. And again, you can mate a 15 or 30 or 45 amp connector together because the pin, the contact area is the same. It's basically the diameter for the wire size. So the connector pin will be inside the body in this orientation with the, the, um, the tongue, the curved side uh, facing down. And if you look at it from the side view, it'll be like this. It'll be inside like that. And of course the other one will plug in from this side in mate. Okay, so it's time to um, put the pins on. So one of the things I'm going to do first is kind of cut the cable, split it apart here a little bit. So I'm just going to cut that with my side cutters and pull the two wires apart a little bit. And then I'll use my wire strippers and strip it back. And the amount we need to strip is basically uh, this part of the connector. So it's about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and strip off about a quarter of an inch of the insulation. And there's that and just twist them together. Okay, now I'll go but now I'll go and um, strip the other end of the cable and then we'll look at the connector pins. First one is the 15 amp and you can see the wire diameter is larger than the than the center of the pin and it won't go on. That's the 15. This is the 45 and this would probably work. Um, it's quite a bit large and if I solder this I have to bend the tabs over myself. So that's the 45 and here's the 30 amp pin. You can see ah, that looks about right and this slides over the wire easily. So we'll use the 30 amp pin. Okay, so I'm gonna tin the wires for the ends that I'm gonna solder into the pins. So I've twisted these together to make sure I don't have any dangling strands. And I'm just gonna put a little solder on the iron and lay the iron alongside of the, the wire here and add some solder and I just want to have enough to fill in the voids between the strands. I don't want a great big glob on there. Otherwise, it may get too thick to go on to or to fit inside the pin. So just a little bit on the side. I see it flow in through the, the strands of the copper. And that will do. If we think about this for a second, it'll make uh, assembly of the connector a little bit easier. So the pin will be inside, you know, this is the correct orientation, A on right, I can read it. The pin will be inside like that. So when I go ahead to solder it, if I solder it in this direction with the red wire in this way, it'll go in better. It'll go in easier. I won't have to twist these around. So I want to have the black wire towards the right when I go ahead and solder this with the tongue facing down. Okay, I just uh, flipped this over 180 degrees from what I just said to allow me to feed the solder in through the little little opening here. So I'm just gonna put just a tab on the iron here to help with the heat transfer. And I wanna keep the iron towards the wire end and feed it in from the pin end. And you do not wanna get any solder on the contact area. So there it's flowing in and since it's tinted, I can see it going up the crack there and that should probably do. You also don't want to get a lot of solder on the outside of the pin, otherwise it may not go into the connector body properly. And now we're ready to solder the black pin. Getting the heat towards the wire end, feed the solder in through the little opening here. Do not get any solder on the contact area. And since that's tinned, there's solder inside. And I think that should do. Let it cool down for a little bit, a few seconds, and it held. Okay, we're ready to um, push the pins into the connectors. As you can see, uh, it'll go in in this, this orientation, and soldering them on, I have them so they're pretty much ready to go. And when you push these in, you want to get them even, and you want to get them flat so they go in to the back here flat and straight and you push them in and with the big wires 
you can push them right on in. If I push these in now, and if we're lucky, we'll hear them go click. Click, click. And those are now in. And the orientation is right. I can see the pin is all the way to the end. And that's in there nice and tight. And we have the soldered end completed. Okay, so let's move on to crimping a connector pin on. I have this crimping tool, and it's a ratchet tool. You can hear it making the ratchet noise. And this is one I bought years ago from West Mountain Radio, although these are available from just about any place that you buy the power pole connectors. And what this style of tool forces you to do is to close it all the way down in order to get a proper crimp. So if you close it part, part way, it won't open back up. Now if it does jam, you get a wrong size wire in there, you can press this little lever up and it will allow it to open up so you can remove the pin. Okay, this crimp tool has a die in it, installed in it, and it has three cavities. One for the 15 amp, the second for the 30 amp, and the third for the 45 amp um, connector pin. And as I close this down, you can see that we'll be closing really tight on the 15 amp. Um, as compared to the 30 and less tight on the 45 and this is because the, of the different amount of wire that's going to be inside the pin so we have to make sure we get the right pin with the right wire size in the right cavity and you can see the close-up of the die here the shape where it has these curved areas which bends it kind of back on itself to ensure the crimp connector has the correct shape so it fits correctly inside the plastic shell some guys will say you don't need the expensive uh, crimp tool that you can crimp the pins with a pair of channel locks or some of these other tools that you may have in your toolbox. I've never been able to obtain consistent, repeatable uh, results with these things. I'll take my good old ratchet crimp tool any day. Okay, to get started, I've stripped back the wire about a quarter of an inch. Uh, just kind of twist the ends together to make sure there's no loose strands. So to start, we place the pin down into the cavity and we want the the flat edge here to be down against this this side here so it goes in this way not that way so it goes down into the cavity and it should just drop in there and seat like that now to start with here I'm just going to close this down a little bit to kind of hold it in there while we place the wire so I haven't squeezed it together yet so if we think about this for a second it'll save us having to twist the pins around in order to get them into the um, the socket body so the pin is in the die in this orientation and here's the connector so it means it'll slide into the connector in like that so if I keep the red wire to the right of the black I shouldn't have to twist those around I go to insert the pins into the body okay we're ready to crimp the red wire so I'm gonna slide the red wire down into the pin and take and squeeze this all the way down back up and there we are and you can see how the die is crimped it with it rolled the edges in and uh, made it a nice tight and that's on there it won't pull off if it's properly crimped now let's crimp the black wire so I take the pin again and it goes down into the cavity it sits in there I'm just going to close this down a little bit and I'm going to put it the black wire in this orientation I'm just going to pick this up here. I can squeeze it better. I'm going to hold that wire in there so it doesn't slide out. And give that a good squeeze. Tool opens up. And there we are. Both pins crimped on. So this comes up quite often. Do you solder the crimp pin after you've crimped it? Or do you tin the uh, wires before you crimp it? I don't do either. I just take the bare wires, twist them together to make sure there's no dangling uh, uh, wires, and then just crimp it together. I don't go back and re-solder it. Some guys do. I don't. Uh, which is best? I don't know. I figure in commercial applications, like in your cars, you know, all the connections in your cars, everything is crimped in there. Nothing is soldered. So if you have the right tool and you do it properly, that is on there. It's not coming off. 
Now, if you pull on there and it slides out, it hasn't been crimped properly. Eh, maybe if you solder it, that'll hold it in. But uh, if it's done right, I don't believe you need to solder it. But there's lots of opinions out there about what is best. This is just the way I do it. Okay, so time to push the wires into the connector. Uh, you can see uh, this is the orientation that they'll go in with the, the curved in area facing up. I slide uh, both of those in there, get them uh, flat, as flat as possible, and push these in. We should hear it click. 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 All done. Bob's your uncle. So that wraps up building my DC power extension cable. Like I said earlier in the video, you can plug the connectors into themselves. There's no power supply in. There's no radio in. Uh, this can be an extension cord without any problems. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, thanks for watching. And if you've liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my K7AGE channel, please press the subscribe button. And you can follow me on Twitter with Ham Radio Postings at K7AGE and on Google Plus at Plus K7AGE. 73. See you later. Thanks for watching.